that stand? Seven pin just standing there laughing at him. The ball made a deep recovery back into the pocket. Knocks the 10 pin out. Seven pin stands. This is directly attributed to reactive resin balls. The powerful ball makes them move strongly into the pocket. Everybody looks at the 10 pin to get kicked out, and the 7 pin stands there and laughs at him. Almost missed it. Well, he went hard and straight. Yeah, you can smile now. <laughs> Didn't like the way it got off his hand, but... He'll take it. You can see this is... It's not going to hook, folks. That ball's going hard and straight. Just clips it. I roll at the uh, foul line, but uh, strike spare to start the match for Pearson Himmler and now Rick Steelsmith. What a beautiful style. Wichita, Kansas. Steelsmith also going with the big hook, a la Himmler. He leaves the 10 pin. Solid 10. Steelsmith sidelined uh, for a year and a half, late 80s, with a shoulder injury. Also sideline him for the 93 Winter Tour. He really worked hard on this game, uh, working out uh, four or five times a week. Five, seven, 155 pounds. And he can certainly bowl. No problem with that 10-pin spare. So a couple of spares now for the team of Bennett and Steele Smith. They trail by one to Pearson Himmler. And for six of our ten players on the telecast today, Marshall, are looking for the first titles. And that's added pressure. Well, he made the great adjustment. Left the four pin in the first right, Phil, but gave that ball a little more room. Swished him out. Powerful strike. Pierce, who got things going in the first frame with the strike, now up in the third. Once again, doubles competition. So the players will only bowl the five frames each. And it certainly, it, it, makes it, it makes it tough to try and get a lot of strikes pieced together. Both seniors bowling the odd frames. National Tour bowling the even frames. They'll finish in the 10th. He got down on one knee, hoping that would fall over. Tri trips out the four pin, and he did get a shot clock warning. So, well, look, looked like he was having some problems getting his uh, thumb in the ball and taking a little extra time. Himmler will try to make it two and roll through a great shot in the second frame. Just left the seven pin. On the two and the ten, and we saw a lot of that. Throughout the tournament, what tries to, well, tried to get the ball to hook back, and he's playing a very steep angle, swinging the ball well out to the right. Now watch it makes his recovery back to the 1-3 pocket. Not enough of the head pin, and with that steep hook, the 2 pin gets the company of the 10. Needs to get the ball to the left of the 2 pin, slide it into the 10. This one you can make, right? This is certainly a makeable split. And it's something that he's left quite a bit with that steep looking ball of his. Hard and straight. Oh, he got too much of the two pin. Chops it off. So right now, Pierce and Himmler down to Bennett and Steelsmith. Tour on ESPN is brought to you by the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, America's premier bowling destination. For information, call 800-304-BOWL. And by Brunswick. Get the power of proactive only from Brunswick. And by Pfizer, where life is our life's work. Rick Steelsmith up now in the fourth frame, working on a strike. 1988 PBA Rookie of the Year. As an amateur in 87, Rick won the ABC Masters in Niagara Falls, trying to make it an early double. Oh, yeah. Great shot for Steel Smith. Flush in the pocket. No 10 pin that time, Phil. A double up by 21. John Bennett, the senior, on 
this team. Once again, this is a doubles event if you're just tuning in. National Senior Doubles, trying to make it three in a row. Another nice shot. Beautiful shot, John Bennett. Now let's take a look what's in the bag for Chuck Pierce using the using the Columbia Columbia 300 complete chaos and not getting the complete fingers in the ball that time as it slides a little bit to the right. He's got a primal rage spare ball that goes much straighter. So Pierce Moving the string. Up in the fifth. And chopping it off. My fault. Leaving the four and the seven. They're falling further and further behind. So now Himmler has to get things going here for his team. Got to start to work on something as Pearson Himmler down 43 midway through this opening match to Bennett and Steel Smith. That's a fly and a seven pin once again. Well, he's left the seven pin coming in light in the pocket. Now he leaves it coming in a little bit high in the pocket. And that's about all you can do is shake your head. This ball's not going to go as far to the right before it makes its move. You can see it's definitely coming in a little bit too high. Four pin falls out. Disappointing reaction for Himmler. Himmler captured his first national title last year in Albuquerque. No problem with the spare in the sixth frame, but Bennett and Steel Smith certainly can take control of this match, working on a three-bagger, and Steel Smith now up in the sixth frame and leading by 43 pins. Slow rolling it. Lots of hook. Back and, and the 10 pin, Bill, the 10 pin right at the last. Scattering those pins all over the deck. This ball's going to come from right field, hooking hard into the pocket. And I think that was a four pin that got shoved all the way over as we take a look at a surprise, <laughs> relieved. Waiting up there. Rick Steele Smith. Bennett in the seventh. It did hook a little bit, but uh, it's a 2-8. Well, that's going to give Pearson Himmler a little bit of life. Let's take a look in the bag. John Bennett. He's got the Brunswick HPD Danger Zone. And his spare ball, the target zone. Target zone goes much straighter. Trying to pick up 2-8, and uh, does just that. So Bennett and Steele Smith still on top here in the opening match. And we're back at the National Bowling Stadium. Steele Smith and Bennett up by 51 over Himmler and Pierce. Chuck Pierce now up in the seventh frame. Chuck looking for his first senior championship. He's won a couple of regional titles. Taking some extra time. Oh, Chuck, come on. Johnson's worst loss in playoff history, Jimmy Johnson has decided to resign. We join him now live in Davie. We uh, will be joining him in just a few minutes live in Davie, Florida. He's going to hand the reins over to Dave Wanstead, making an official in a press conference. He scheduled the press conference at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Chris Berman was joking earlier on Countdown that maybe his boat got stuck on a sandbar. We're all waiting to hear what he has to say. Just a few facts to share with you. His coaching career is over after nine seasons in the NFL. Of course, everybody remembers that he won two Super Bowl championships with the Dallas Cowboys. He promised to do the same in three years with the Miami Dolphins, but was unsuccessful. 
In the four years with um, Miami, he had a coaching record that did not surpass John, uh, Don Shula's four-year coaching record over the same amount of time. There were four unspectacular seasons in Miami, of course, ending with the 62-7 to loss yesterday against Jacksonville. Jacksonville firing on all cylinders. The 55-point margin of victory, the second largest in NFL history. We had to go back to 1940 to see the previous bigger win and Jacksonville getting ready to play in the title game next week. We also will be covering today's games that are getting that are underway we're talking the nfc champ uh nfc divisional playoff game as well as the afc the titans and tennessee are playing to meet jacksonville after jacksonville handily disposed of miami at this time we're going to get our ducks in a row take a quick break pay a few bills we'll be back with jimmy johnson after the break And we're back at the National Bowling Stadium. Steele Smith and Bennett up by 51 over Himmler and Pierce. Chuck Pierce now up in the seventh frame. Chuck looking for his first senior championship. He's won a couple of regional titles. Taking some extra time. Oh, Chuck, come on, please. And that's two times in a row. And you can hear Chuck doing a little bit of color commentary. He's Mike, and he knew he made a bad shot. Well, that was neat. Is that a matter of being uh, confused about the lanes, or is it coming off your hand in a certain way? Well, he the first couple of shots that he threw were very, very good, and then uh, the last two, I believe, just, just errant deliveries. Timing. Looks back in there for the spare. Well, they got to get it going, Marshall. Yeah, they're finding themselves so far behind. We get to the eighth frame, 55 pin deficit. Best they can do is 202. Right now. Himmler yeah. almost left a nine pin. He's had a couple of seven pins, but uh, Brian Himmler gets a strike. Take a look at Brian Himmler, that powerful delivery, the way he opens up his shoulders really releases through the ball. Puts a lot of fingers, a lot of wrist into the ball. Hence a lot of hook. Ben and Steel Smith, pretty good position right now, 55. Rick in the eight. Oh, beautiful shot once again, getting lined up for the next match, huh, Marshall? Well, yeah, right now they're trying to stay focused. Make sure they know the line so that they can go into the next match. Senior on this team, John Bennett, Clarkston, Michigan. He's been pretty much in the pocket. Brings it back right there once again. So a double now for Bennett and Steel Smith. The tradition of championship bouts and top rated challengers continues on ESPN 2's Friday Night Fights. This Friday, a 10 round cruiserweight bout between James Tony and Terry McGroom from DePaul University Alumni Hall in Chicago. Plus all the latest boxing news and information. Once again, coming up on Friday, Chuck Pierce quickly up in the ninth. Better and shot. And it was, uh, Phil, it was just, just the timing and the release. Himmler trying to finish with 202. This will be the first time he's had the opportunity to throw more than one shot in a row. Unfortunately for the team of Pierce and Himmler, looks like it's going to be a little too late. We're in the 10th. Marshall, you've won quite a few doubles tournaments. Uh, I remember with Mark Roth. And uh, is it difficult? Uh, and again, a, a tough shot here from Himmler. But how difficult is it rolling doubles? Well, you don't want to let your partner down. I think that's that's the key. Uh, in an individual game, if you get off to a bad start, you know you feel bad for yourself. But you really you, you want to be there to try and lift your partner up. And for Pearson uh, and Himmler, they they both struggle. 167 for Pierce and Himmler, and then it's different. Match play, you're still bowling the entire game once you get on television, five frames, so. Well, there's a problem with rhythm as well because you're not throwing as many shots. After nine seasons.
Welcome to the National Bowling Stadium here in Reno, Nevada. It is the National Senior Doubles Championship. Hi, everyone. I'm Phil Ferguson, along with Marshall Holman, PBA Hall of Famer. And uh, Marshall, in the opening match, an interesting match, and Rick Smith, Steel Smith and his partner certainly went right at it early on. Well, Steel Smith and Bennett were both on track. They had the right line of the pocket. They figured out a way to get the carry, and uh, the opposition had some trouble, had a lot of trouble. You take a look at the teams upcoming. Is there a, a dominating team that, that you see out of the uh, final couple of teams here? Well, I don't want to overlook anybody, but Pete Couture and David Husted have what I consider to be the most championship experience. Husted, three-time U.S. Open winner. Couture has six tournaments that he's won on the senior tour, and he's also won five tournaments on the national tour. So they're the team that really, really looks good, looks tough to beat, but, you know, Steel Smith and, uh, and Bennett, they bowled great, and Glass and Robert Smith, they led the tournament by over 400 pins, so there's going to be a lot of exciting action. Let's get to the next match right now. Thanks a lot, Marshall. We are uh, set. Here's the handshake. Four participants here in match two, but Steel Smith and Bennett dominated. The opening match, a couple of tough breaks for the team of uh, Pierce and Himmler early on. And a couple of open frames. And so now, get a look at Jim Long, Palm City, Florida. A little straighter and kicking out that 10 pin. Messenger strike for Long. Throws the ball with a pretty straight trajectory, but uh, with the pins danced out there like uh, they were hit with a truck. You had mentioned before the senior players maybe a bit straighter, and uh, then we see the touring players like Rick Steele Smith hook it a little bit. <laughs> Certainly a much more contemporary style of bowling. Steel Smith's ball going around the third arrow, out to about 10, coming back strong into the pocket. Flush, pleased, just like the last game. John Bennett up in the second frame. Giving it time to hook. For the early double, taking a 10-pin lead, starting the second game off just the way they finished that opening match. Take a look now at Brian LeClaire. Chatham, New York, right-hander, 5'11". He's been a touring pro now for nine years. He'll hook it up a little bit. Playing outside, here it comes. A little bit different angle, Marshall. Yeah, LeClaire playing a more of an outside line. Ball just teetering on the edge. Look at the way it hooks back hard for about 45 feet. Watch the six pin into the 10. Thank you. Long trying to make it three in a row for his team. Captured one regional title. These two players crossed during match play, and that one had crossed over, and he gets the strike. How about it? Well, he's smiling because he knows he just stole one. Take a look at this line from way inside, and, well, he pulled the ball five boards left of his target. Hippin's going to go to the sideboard and uh, do a lot of damage. Happy to have that. Fortunate. Light able to get him to go. So all strikes here to start the match, too. Three strikes apiece. And interesting, on this particular match, you know, the, the higher seeds get their choice of where they want to start, and they've made Bennett the anchor man. So the senior is going to be the anchor man on that team. They came through in match one. Now trying to make it four in a row. They stay. You heard him say stay. Now you knew the ball was left just a, just a pinch. Didn't hold the pocket. Thought he might be able to trip out that pesky four pin, but not to be as that gives Long and LeClaire a, a one pin lead. Then it said of uh, Rick Steele's best doubles partner ever had. I guess so. Huh? <laughs> Took him all the way to the telecast. No 
problem with the four pin spare. We've got a dandy here in match two. Right now, Long and Leclerc up by one. National senior doubles and a one pin lead now for Long and Leclerc. Show your PBA loyalty by becoming a member of the PBA fan club. Fan club members receive quarterly newsletters, which include the latest inside information on the PBA tours, also tips, interviews with the pros, discounts on PBA merchandise, contests, much more. Membership is $14.95 plus $3 shipping and handling and includes a PBA decal. For more information or to join, why not join? Call 1-888-440-1340. I'm a member. I think you are too, aren't you, Marshall? I, I bet I am. Yeah, I know. Brian LeClaire and Long out the gate with three in a row. A little bit more inside from the last time. Still made it work. Well, he either pulled that ball a little bit or the, last, or the one previous. He's, he swung, but uh, you, know, you must find an area on the lane where you can, where you can have some room. LeClaire's done that. Up by 11. His partner, Long, coming up now. And Jim Long and Brian LeClaire able to cross together this week. So that, I'm sure, helped out a bit get to know each other on the lanes a little bit brings it back in a 10 pin well you remember the last time that long was on lane 25 he pulled the ball and went over to the brooklyn side this time makes a great shot ball comes in half pocket watch the six pin second from your right it's going to lay in the channel just doesn't have the energy to kind of pop out that 10 pin long goes to a harder ball good spare shooter that 10 pin spare in the fifth frame now let's take a look at what's in the bag for Rick Steelsmith Rick throwing a messenger titanium with a pin five inches from the CG and three and a half from his axis point he's got it sanded and the roll creates a smoother arc down the lane the spare ball doesn't quite hook as much but he's gonna have to use it Rick Steele threw the ball slower that time. Not as aggressive down the lane. Ball hooked in high. Steele Smith teamed up with Tita Semez, 91, to win the senior national doubles title. A couple of national titles for Steele Smith. Now Rick's had that spare ball for a long time. The old Black Knight doesn't hook much at all. It's been a good friend to him for many years. I haven't heard the Black Knight mentioned for a while. You get accustomed, I guess, to bowling equipment. Why well, spare balls, I guess, uh, certainly. Certainly do. Oh, Bennett didn't like it off his hand, Marshall. What do you do? Very uh, unlucky. Should have been the 2-4-5, which is a tough spare. But a pin came off the sideboard, knocked the two pin out. Left. He's got a nice form to him. Very smooth and relaxed release. But you can see on his face, didn't like the way that came off his hand. Needs to fit the ball between the four and the five. Certainly makeable. Extremely makeable. What a great shot to help keep them in the match. <laughs> You'll see as he fits the ball right in between the four and the five. Beautifully done. And certainly kept him in the match here. Kept it close. Long and Leclerc lead by 14. Leclerc coming in high. Leaves the three, six, seven, ten. And what looked like maybe... You 20 pin plus lead for Leclerc and Long if Bennett hadn't made that split now it could turn into a deficit how do you pick this one up? needs to put the ball to the right hand side of the 3 pin knock the 3 pin into the 10 it basically Phil it's just a baby split with a little bit of company <laughs> oh! and that's just how to get it done keeps, makers. keeps that 10 pin lead Once
Once again, the ball to the right of the three pin. Over toward the seven, kicks off the wall, knocks it down. Satisfaction and the 10 pin lead. Jim Long, his partner now up in the seventh frame. They have a 10 pin advantage. Sets it in there, but just the four pin. And we've seen a few four pins on the left hand lane. The left lane does hook more than the right hand lane. There's more, more turn in the back. And I think that's why you're seeing the seniors on the left hand lane because the younger guys have more hand. They're able to get the ball back into the pocket. They're on the lane that doesn't hook as much. Long picks it up, going straight. And so a nine pin advantage. Oh, let's go back and check uh, Leclerc and the split that he made just moments ago here in the National Senior Doubles Championship from Reno. Look at that. Back with more in a minute. And we're back here in Reno, a nine-pin advantage for the team of Long and LeClaire over Ben and Steel Smith. International soccer action is on the schedule this afternoon on ESPN. The United States national team plays host to Iran at 5 p.m. Eastern time from the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. And for more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network. Go.com. Exciting the second match here, Rick Steel Smith up in the seventh, and I still go back to the senior being the anchor on this team interesting well it's going to it's certainly going to play out for some fun toward the end of the match still down by nine working on a spare In the back. oh almost left the 10 pin on a very unusual hit well the ball came in so steep on this shot really coming in hard from the right. Now watch the 10 pin. I don't know how it didn't fall earlier, but something came over there and knocked it down and Rick's sort of staring at it going, come on, it's got a strike. Then and now in the eighth frame. Got to make it two in a row. Too slow. John, John, John. Too slow. slow. So the big split for Bennett, still in search of his first senior title. Try to get that ball. He made a split the last time on this lane. Try to get to the left-hand side of the four pin, slide it into the 10. Much more difficult. Now, well, unable to do it. Cut close. Now let's take a look at what's in the bag. Roger LeClaire using the complete chaos. Drilled five inches from the pin and five from the CG. From his action point, it's polished. The drilling promotes length, strong back ends, and a lot of strikes. <laughs> Just like that, Leclerc strikes in the eighth. 21 pin advantage now for Long and Leclerc. Jim Long up in the ninth. And he's taking some extra time. Mm, will the five fall? Oh, the Brunswick Pro Pen says uh, no. <laughs> All the way around. Well, it's spun around many times. We're giggling at Mr. Long. But still, they find themselves in very good shape. Watch the five. It'll spin around. There's one revolution. There's another, a little kick, but <laughs> not, <laughs> not falling. Easy spare here. I say easy. Well, it should be routine for these professionals. He picks it up. Interesting. If Bennett Steelsmith could strike out, that would give them 223. Long Leclerc going at a 224 pace, so not. Not over yet, but, but for Bennett... He's had trouble the last two times on that left-hand lane, and he will be the anchor man. Rick Steele Smith up in the ninth. Oh, yeah. All right, Steele Smith did what he had to do. 
Now it's time for Bennett. And I really think the shot though in the, the previous frame for John Bennett was attributed to coming in light the frame prior to that. So he needs to forget about what happened and just make sure that he gets the ball projected down the lane properly. He can put a lot of pressure on. This first strike right here would force them to mark. And just Awful. really just kind of lost his form the last few shots. You see the ball just far, too far to the left right off the bat. And, and uh, really unfortunate, both so good the first match. He could tell immediately that just wasn't a good shot. Disappointment, but still has to be satisfied for the most part with how he's done the entire week. <laughs> They can shoot 203 with a strike. Well, mathematically, it's not it's not over, but uh, the job for the player for Bennett right now is just to strike here, make it 203, and the player would have to show up in the 10th frame. And a much better shot gets the strike, and he had a great year last year. He cashed in. Uh, the last time. Nine tournaments. He bowled in just nine. Off to a nice start here in the year, year 2000. What was different from the first to the second shot for Bennett? Well, he he relaxed and allowed his form to take uh, to take over. Leclerc on the nose. Could, excuse me, Phil. You could see that Leclerc moved way inside. He didn't mess around with that with the shot next to the channel. Just wanted to make sure that he kept the ball kept the ball on the lane, right down the middle. All he needed was a few. Looks like he might get six. All of a sudden, turns into nine. And he'll make this fair, and you can bet that, well, or he won't make it. I gave it to him before he made it. And I put the surprise on me. That's unfortunate. Doesn't get a chance to throw a fill ball, and, uh, but makes it to the next match. Coming up next, Marshall Holman. And the score more with Brunswick Tip here from Reno, Nevada. Second match, Leclerc and Long move on after defeating Steele Smith and Bennett. The final score, 2-12 to 2 3 We keep moving on the next couple of weeks. Next Sunday, 12.30 start time. The Las Vegas Open from uh, the Orleans in Las Vegas. The following week, 2 o'clock start. Brunswick Pro Source Don Carter Classic. Don Carter's All-Star Lanes in Dallas, and following Sunday, February 6th, 12.30 start, it is the Chattanooga Open. We'll be back at Holiday Bowl Brainerd in Chattanooga, the next three stops on the Pro Bowlers Tour. Now, here is this week's score more with Brunswick Tip Marshall with an interesting perspective on the sport of bowling. Welcome to another Score More with Brunswick Tip. You know, a lot of people think bowling's a pretty easy game. But it's not as easy as it looks, due to the optical illusion called parallax. That's when parallel lines seem to converge in the distance, not unlike railroad tracks or the outside edges of a bowling lane. And we prepared a couple of models to help illustrate this. Because the bowling lane is much longer than it is wide, we get an unrealistic view of the lane from the foul line, with the lane appearing shorter than it actually is. By American Bowling Congress rules, the bowling lane is 41 and a half inches wide and 60 feet long from foul line to head pin. Now, one of these three models is a true 120th scale reduction of the lane. Which one of these looks the closest to what you think the actual lane is like? The correct answer? Well, it's actually this narrow lane right here. And I'll tell you, that surprised me. I thought it would have been the wider one. But this is the 120th scale representation. Two inches wide, 36 inches from the foul line to the head pin. Now, if I was going to bowl in this lane, I'd have to have a ball this big. Imagine how tough that would be to get the ball from the foul line all the way down into the pocket and do it consistently. Not very easy. No, not very easy. All right. Coming up next, Brian LeClaire and Jim Long will take on Pete Couture and Dave Houston.
We're back here at the National Bowling Stadium, just about set for our semifinal match. Let me send it on down to my uh, partner, Marshall Holman, with the tournament leaders. All right. Thank you very much, Phil. I'm here with Bob Glass and Robert Smith. And, and Bob, you bowled a little bit on the national tour. Didn't have as much success you would have liked. As a senior, you seem to be stronger than ever. Yeah, well, uh, what's happened is as I've gotten older. My skills have been slower than the other players. That's about it. No, no big surprise. I try to stay in shape. That's about it. Well, you're doing a great job. And, and both of you guys going for your first PBA title. Now, Robert, I know that you feel a little overdue for this. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's about time. I've, I've had my chances. I've, I've had a couple seconds. Uh, things haven't really gone my way on the shows. Hopefully uh, this week, if it goes well, I've got a great partner. Uh, I think uh, I think we got a real good chance here of getting our first title. Well, have you been watching the, the play so far? You, Lane's been transitioning, something you've observed that might help you in your title match? You know what, I couldn't really tell you because everyone that I've seen on the show so far has been playing a different line. So I really, I'm just going to go out there and throw the ball the way I've done it all week, which is stand left, throw right. <laughs> all right, Phil, back up to you. we got a couple of guys that really throw a lot of hook, both the senior and the younger Smith. All right, thanks a lot, Marshall. Those players on top. Glass and Smith, again, looking for their first titles. In fact, six out of the ten competing this afternoon, looking for their very first PBA titles. And we are set now for our semifinal match. LeClaire and Long going up against Houston, David Houston and Pete Couture. Jim Long will start the match. I'm sure his wife watching at home. Palm City, Florida. Shirley. All the children. Stephen and Sherry, the first shot here of the semifinal match. Jim Long has bowled awfully well here. Well, this ball went long. Did not hook back into the pocket. Leads the one, two, four, and ten. One of the problems of missing the pocket, you leave some strange configurations. Best way to pick this one up? I get the head pin going over towards the ten. Ball left of the head pin. He's going to a harder surface ball. You find that interesting? Maybe well, something? just wants to wants to make sure that he just starts it right there and doesn't have, it, doesn't have it move. And unfortunately, he needed it to hook a little bit. You've got to wonder if uh, the idea of bowling Houston Couture made long maybe just a little tighter at the start of the match. We're talking to David and Pete last night. They said it was a bit weird, a bit strange, because they've bowled together on the national tour for 12, 15 years. And here you are, David with national tour player and Pete, the senior, David will take the first shot. A lot of loft, and he comes in light, and not only but not only has Dave Houston been good for a long time, but uh, he was very lucky in the first frame to get those pins all to fall over. Came in real light. Earlier on, you talked about this team perhaps being the team. Well, they've got so much experience, and, uh, you know, it, it, it goes back to well before Couture was a senior player. He was a great player on the national tour. back. Strike, so a double for the team of Couture and Houston. Well, it's all about taking advantage, taking advantage of opportunities, and the opportunity was there for Couture to throw a double, ball hooking back into the pocket, light, but strong enough to knock them all down. Houston got a lucky strike, Couture, right where he wanted it. And LeClaire comes in high in the pocket, leaving the three, six, and nine. And you know, getting back to that three pin that he missed in the 10th frame of the last game, he had the game locked up, didn't need to make that, that pin to, to win, but very important for momentum to have picked that up and then go back to your strike line and make a credible shot. Chops it off, so two opens for the team of Long and LeClaire. Got to get it going early. I mean, you have 10 frames, and basically here you have five frames each. Big advantage for Couture and Houston, sitting on the bench watching the other team throw open. Better shot, and uh, just the 10 pin standing. He'll go back to that plastic ball that doesn't hook a lot. Shouldn't have any problem making the 10-pin, but the damage 
a lot of it's already been done. 18 pins in the second frame, a washout, eight out. And then that 369, where they got nine out. Important to get the first mark of the game. Got to get something going, and he's able to pick up that 10 pin spare. Spare in the third, as you watch David Husted up in the third frame with 13 national titles, 17 regional titles. Yeah, he's pretty good. <laughs> Only player to have won three U.S. Opens. Yeah. Did it, had a couple of them back to back. Came in light, his opening frame. Watch Houston, many years. Beautiful style, a little bit different. And a strike, kicking out that seven. So three in a row for the team of Houston on Couture. Now, now let's take a look at what's in the bag for Pete Couture. Got a riot zone, the pin and the ring finger with the hole an inch past the axis. Now this riot zone is a proactive ball. It clears the front and mid lane easily. The layout lets Pete use the angle to the front part of the lane and stronger reaction down the lane. See if it works. Oh. A little too strong, but uh, fortunate just the seven pin. Yeah. An in in interesting combination with Couture and Husted. Husted is unflappable. As we take another look at Couture with the ball coming in high into the pocket. Fortunate. Pete sort of uh, sees himself as not getting a lot of good breaks, but uh, so far this game, they've, they've all been good, Pete. Hooks it back to pick up the seven pin. Point out Leclerc and Long just lost, picked up that spare in the third frame, and now down by 42 early on. But freewheeling, I guess, now. Well, they better be. Well, he made, made a really good shot, leads a 7 and the 10, and, and he's got to be wondering, what the heck do you have to do? Boy, ball was in the pocket. So he'll he throw, will. excuse me, he'll throw the ball hard to try and bounce something, but it's not likely. Three open frames in the first four. And LeClaire will sit down and his partner, Jim Long, who has the only mark in this game for this team. Well, Jim Long made the 10-pin in his previous frame, but LeClaire did everything right the last frame, except the pins wouldn't cooperate. Sometimes good shots get bad results. That's another thing that makes bowling such a difficult and frustrating game. Trying to get it back up, not... Completely. Yeah, the ball looked pretty good right here, but didn't get the proper leverage. The ball never hooked back into the pocket. He knocks the four into the two pin, but for Long and no, it's, it's, just, to, it's yeah. going to be a long day. Yeah, for Long and Leclerc, this is, this is a real tough way. Tough way, especially at Long's first national telecast. They would have liked to see better than this. So Long's finished third a couple of times in the showboat and senior championship. Now the team of Husted and Couture. And Husted going two previous shots, two strikes. He's up now in fifth frame. And you talked about Husted being a competitor and unflappable and just can't rock him, can you? No. I expect this ball even higher in the pocket. Every shot getting a little bit better for David Husted. You can access all the latest information about the PBA by checking out the PBA's website at pbatour.com. Now, the site sponsored by Brunswick features all the latest tournament standings, story, stats, and news from the PBA, as well as game-by-game -game updates during match play and scheduled live chats with the pros. Couture in the six, hammers it home. Couture and Houston doing a number here in the semifinal game of the National Bowling Stadium National Senior Doubles Championship. Well, the team of Couture and Houston playing very well here this afternoon. ESPN takes you courtside for the first Grand Slam tournament of the millennium. American Pete Sampras will be searching for a record-breaking 13th career Grand Slam title. Coverage begins tonight at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network, Go.com. 
So Brian LeClaire, Jim Long down big time here in the semifinal match. Marshall and LeClaire up in the sixth. Well, they, they still have an opportunity to shoot 214. That would be uh, finishing with the last seven strikes. And, well, it looks like they're going to need every one of them right now. Will that get there? And it struck. Beautiful shot. Now Jim Long trying to make it a double. Claw their way back into the semifinal match. Well, we've seen that a number of times for Jim Long, leaving the flat 10 on that left-hand lane, lane 25. Switching over to the hard plastic ball, and it just doesn't seem as if uh, Long is quite matched up with his with his equipment. He, you know, when he does make a good shot, he can't quite get the 10-10 out, and spares aren't going to do it right now for Long. Long was in the U.S. Air Force for 26 years. He's in great shape. Works out three, four times a week. Picks up that 10-pin spare. Now for Houston and Couture, Marshall. Uh, Six frames, five strikes. That's probably what you expected from this team. Well, you know, I mean, to, to make them the favorites, that, that's one thing. For them to come through and do it, uh, you know, you give them all the credit. I like what uh, like what Houston has done. He came in light the first time, a little bit better the next time. Real good last time. And well, he's maybe he's still fishing around a little bit. The one, the two, the four, six, and ten. This ball was right off his hand, doesn't make the hook back into the pocket, goes right through, punches out a big hole. This can be made a couple of ways. You can fit the ball in between the one and the six pin, or you can go left and try and knock the head pin into the six and the ten. You said going left, and he leaves the six and the ten. Open frame, which, you know, that's going to plant a little bit of doubt in your mind. They're still in good shape. You can see he just catches too much of the head pin to knock it into the 6 and 10. That won't damage them as far as the probability of winning this match, but to plant the seed of doubt could hurt them in the future. Bucket. Well, if I'm, uh, if I'm Robert Smith and Bob Glass right now, I'm, I'm, I'm liking the fact that they're having a little bit of problems. Still some strategy, a lot of strategy involved in the doubles competition. Looking at the scoreboard, I believe that Long and Leclerc can shoot 194. And uh, Couture and Husted, they were working on a 220 pace, now they're uh, down to 199. <laughs> so two opens. Couture and Hudson, uh, Houston, back to back. Talking about Hudson, that would speak Couture, I believe, teaming up with Tommy Hudson to beat Marshall Holman and Mark Roth back in 1980. Nice of you to bring that up. <laughs> oh. Ryan LeClaire, ringing 10 pin. Take a look at that culprit pin. It's the six. It's going to wrap itself right around the bottom of the 10. Just hasn't been their game. Uh, Leclerc and Long picks up the spare. Well, and just getting marks in the last four frames, uh, Leclerc and Long have tightened this match up, but boy, they, they desperately need to get some strikes. 36 pins down, two frames to go. Long, a little extra time here in the ninth. There he gets what he's looking for. Long hoping this isn't his last game today. They still have a glimmer of hope. Well, you know, Husted, Aaron Schott, and Couture, also an Aaron Schott, and they, they got to come back now. They're bowling on the same way in the entire game. Got to make a move here. Yeah, yeah right. Just a matter of spares. You could hear, 
Houston partner, Pete Couture, with a little encouragement as he encourages this ball to get back up in the pocket. Gets there, but leaves the 7 10. He has no problem picking that up. Come down to decent count here in the 10th frame. For Pete Couture and having Pete Couture as your anchor and even decent count, I think it's over. That's probably over, but I thought the player was going to make that three pin in the last game, so we'll watch. That'll take care of it. They'll find themselves in the title match. Talking a little bit, haven't you? Uh, the bucket was on my mind a little bit. And Houston and Couture. Gee, did I say Wrap this match up, and we'll now go into the title match. Huh? We could hear. Yeah, probably. Got nothing, got nothing. Yeah, they're missing the three pin in the racks. We can't know. throw it right now. That was good. Actually, I need to find out. If that shot there strikes. <clears throat> now if I play good, I'll go all back. And I'm gonna play. Right, right. You know? They're talking strategy. That's a, it's one of the things that they were able to do this week that a lot of teams couldn't do. They could relate to each other's games because they bowled together on tour for so long. Couture trying something a little bit different. And I think that's what he'll be going with the next game. That's definitely a spot. Yeah. Look at Couture's style. Not much of a backswing. Flips the ball out of the lane and... Oh, brother. Get stuck right there. That'll win you lots of tournaments. Couture trying to finish out the game with a strike. Three in a row, in fact. And just leaves the 10 pin, but a 2-0-8 in Couture and Houston won this semi-final match and they will now head into the championship match. Should be an exciting one. Robert Smith and Bob Class on deck. So when you go bowling, make sure you ask to compete in an ABC sanctioned league or tournament. It's your assurance that you really are a bowler and not just going bowling. Let's go bowling with ABC. And we're back. The National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. We're just about set for the championship match. Should be an exciting one. Match one, Steel Smith and Bennett over Himmler and Pierce. That big 246 game. McLaren and Long over Steel Smith and Bennett by nine. And Husted and Couture coming through in the semifinal match, 208 to 180. Well, let's take a look at some other finishers, Phil. Our finalists this week at the stadium. Bob Chamberlain and Mika Koyunyemi just missed, finishing sixth. Norm Duke, he was up there. Gary Dickinson and Joe Sacone made a good run, but fell short towards the end. Bob Hart, Rudy Kazimatkis, strong throwing Rudy. Had a little bit of a flu bug this week. And in 18th, Sam Flanagan and Steve Hoskins. Finishing out our top finishes. And it's fun to bowl a doubles tournament once in a while, isn't it? Well, I think so. I think, I think the operative word there is, is once in a while. I don't think it's something that the pros want to do on a week-to-week -week basis. But it breaks up the monotony of, of being, you know, by yourself each and every week. So, good to do it. Bob Glass and Robert Smith, tournament leaders. Glass, high average for the seniors. Smith, high average for the juniors this week. Uh, boy, this guy works out every day. 6'3", 240. A lot of power for a senior player right in the pocket and excited early. Watch how close he comes to the foul line. In fact, he fouled a couple times in practice. Got a foul judge today, Phil. The foul lights aren't working right now. He's dead up in the first frame. Light mixes him up. Well, he's really trying to make the ball hook. Pete Couture will try to make it a double. Couture, the 95 PBA Senior Rookie of the Year, and he had just a sensational year, 1998, when he was voted Senior Player of the Year. Just like the last game, early double. Couture really seems to be tuned in to lane 25, where Houston is still fishing a little bit on 26. 
Get a good look at Robert Smith who can uh, throw the ball a little bit, huh, Marshall? Robert Smith throws the ball unlike anyone I've ever seen. It is just absolutely power personified, six foot, 220 strong. Watch. Those pins don't stand a chance against that ball. That's just fun to watch, Marshall. That is a lot of strength. The profile form, high backswing, big last step, and sort of kind of stuck a little bit at the foul line, but didn't seem to throw him off too much. So Glass now up in the third frame. Both teams starting off with a double. Ives riveted on his target. Oh, my, three in a row. Well, I like Hustad and Couture earlier in the broadcast. Uh, our statistician, Daryl Curtis, he informed me as they were practicing that uh, Glass and Smith, uh, they're going to win. So, uh, you know, we'll wait and watch. You know, if you're going to bet, this is the place to bet. Reno. Hustad in the third, trying to keep pace. Better shot for Houston. An encouragement from his partner. This ball turns the corner, makes the push back up into the pocket, and just slices them out. Kind of a kind of a mini Robert Smith shot. Do you see it coming down to the seniors maybe in, in this uh, final match? All strikes so far. Half ten. Six pin lays in the channel. Doesn't skip out, pop out that ten. Coacher switches balls. He's got a third finger hole for his little finger to build this ball. Helps him have him keep his hand further behind the ball to throw it even straighter. He goes for that ten pin. Able to pick it up. How many holes are you allowed in the ball? Oh, you even have one for each digit. How's that for <laughs> Couture picks well, up that 10 pin and, and he's even excited about that 10 pin right the reason he's excited because I, I watched him earlier and uh, yesterday he missed a bunch of them so oh, a bunch but missed two or three of them Couture the anchor man on the team of Houston and Couture a bit interesting we'll see how it plays out Robert Smith back just one and fortunate just to leave the two pin with as hard as that ball drives back into the pocket the two of the ten are something that Robert Smith deals with a lot. He switches balls as well. He'll just bullet this ball at it. Zoom. <laughs> Hard. Hard and straight and picks up that spare. So here in the title match, dead even. Bob Glass, PhD in economics does research for the university of kansas institute for public policy and business research i, I mentioned uh, before he works out about an hour or two a day uh, he has a bad back you know all about that you've had some back problems and you got to get a loose hey we've got it loose but he's left that solid 10 on lane 25 got yeah a lot of excuse me a lot of stretching to get himself ready to bowl. You'll see the six pin. It's going to go right around the bottom of that 10. Really didn't bowl much on the national tour. Um, but has bowled very well on the senior tour. Still looking for that first title as he picks up the spare. But last year, he made uh, match play in all eight tournaments he entered. And he will win. Houston and Couture. Houston now up in the fifth frame. That's their edge, their champion. Boy, that's really having trouble getting the ball to come back into the pocket. Now let's take a look at what's in the bag for David Husted. It's a complete chaos, five and a half inches from the pin, five and a half for the CG from his axis point. That gives him more length and a strong flip. That his spare ball is the beast. Much straighter with this particular ball. Open hands it. Yeah, not exactly the way he wanted to make it, but he's going to take it. So Houston, the spare, inducted into the PBL Hall, Hall of Fame in 1996. Couture up to the six, and the team of Couture and Houston now down 
by just two midway through this title match. Left lane looks like the easier to get to the pocket. Couture with a strike in the sixth frame. We've got a tight title match here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. Bet you didn't know. And the team of Bob Glass and Robert Smith up by just two pins midway through this title match. ESPN is the place for golf this afternoon and tonight. First at 3 p.m. Eastern time, Carrie Webb defends her title at the LPGA Office Depot Tournament from West Palm Beach. Then at 8 o'clock Eastern, it's the PGA Sony Open from Honolulu. Great golf action today and tonight on ESPN. I still marvel with Tiger Woods winning five in a row. Well, the defending champion, Jeff Sluman, 200 average bowler in his own right. Is that right? So now Robert Smith up in the sixth frame, and they do have a two-pin advantage. And a title. Got to come through in the clutch and final frames. Both these players, Smith and Glass, on top, yet to win a title. Chance to go up by 12. Last strikes here in the seventh. Sets it in there. Double. He was down on both knees. Putting the heat on, Marshall. Now they led by 400 pins, doing just what they're doing right now, taking advantage of the situations, being able to strike while the opposition still tries to figure out the lanes. Houston and Couture up now. David Houston. This team working on a strike, so they can cut it back to two. Will it get back? Oh, yeah. Messenger of his own. It's going to look a little bit like Robert Smith, just kind of in a little slower motion, but job well done. Double for Houston and Couture. Couture now up in the eighth frame with the opportunity to take the lead. Man, Beautiful shot. Man. Made a great shot. Six pin will go around the bottom of the ten pin, and Pete Couture is not pleased at all. That was a great looking shot. You can see the disappointment. Have the opportunity to pick up another 10 pin. Tour. Picks it up. Still. Very close match. Go here in Houston. Down by just three. Well, these are the kind of shots that really define champion or champions. And we'll see that uh, Robert Smith, team working on a double. Youngster. Four and the ten. Just a little extra speed. Ball did not recover to get back up into the pocket. And with that steep angle, you leave funny stuff. This ball goes out to about the six board, comes back hard. Four and the ten are remaining, and very surprised. And a painful look on Robert Smith's face. Pick it up. Slide it over. Oh, so close. <laughs> Sitting on the bench, Houston and Couture. Vault into an 11 pin lead. Glass up in the ninth frame. Trying to give Smith something to work on. He heads back up in the 10th. Still a possible 234 for Glass and Smith. That would put a lot of heat on Couture and Holt and, and Houston, who are now working at a 225 pace. Back, sets it in there for the strike. Glass, a 
strike in the ninth frame. The high average leader on the senior tour last year at better than 225. Now well, I get back to get back to talking about the difficulty of the right hand lane. It has a hang spot. It doesn't hook back into the pocket as readily as the left hand lane. All right, Houston's up now in that right hand lane. What's he thinking? Well, he's thinking he's got to be careful about his speed and make sure that he gets a good hit on the ball. Good fingers. He loves it. Ooh, flat ten. Liked it off his hand. Gonna have a tie here. Yeah, bring him back. You're right, 10 pin lead right now for Pete Couture and David Husted. Six pin's gonna lay in the channel, doesn't get back up and knock out the 10. Husted's always been a very good spare shooter, though I saw him miss a couple 10 pins yesterday as well. <laughs> He's just wanted to get that over with and fix up that 10 pin spare. Look, do a little dance Thank in the line. Shot. One at yep. a time now, let's go. Houston, just to shoot at the 10th, but barely makes it. Oh, my gosh. I, I took care of it. I'm not, I've seen that at a few weddings. Is that the, is that the, the, chicken nor dance? the Northern Oregon chicken dance? I believe <laughs> that could be. Anyway, you get the 10th. Now Pete Couture up in the 10th. And that's one. Come on. And he cured it. Situation for Couture and Husted. If Couture throws two more strikes, he'll force Smith to throw three strikes in the tenth frame on the tougher lane. Oh, what great shots! Come on, I'm still ten now. Houston acting as the cheerleader. Uh, I talked earlier about Pete Couture being the anchor, and it's... Well, for Couture, he, even though he's a 54-year-old senior on. pro, he's got a lot of, lot of experience, and he relishes these opportunities. Possible 234 with a strike here. If he gets them all, they cannot be shut out. What a great finish! Great finish, big dog. Way to go, big man. Three in a row, 234 forces Glass and Smith now. And Smith really up in the tenth. Three strikes, and we have a tie. What happens if we have a tie? Well, it'll be a one-shot roll-off, and it's going to be very difficult on this tough lane. This is this is not the not the lane with a lot of get back on it. He's going to have to do this with his hand and with his accuracy. one. You can see the ball fighting, fighting not to get back to the pocket. Smith just overpowers the lane with his atomic wrist. What a great shot, clutch shot off the hand. Robert Smith. Smith taking a re-rack and uh, as great as that shot was, Phil, got to have two more to have any, any chance. Two more for Smith. We have a tie at 234. Smith probably didn't like the way the one of the three pins were sitting in the rack. Take a little extra time. Good fingers. That's Boy, that's clean off his hand. Still needs one more, but boy, you got to give this kid a lot of credit. Boy, that eighth frame with a big split and comes here in the tenth. Two strikes. Needs one more for a tie. 2.34. Coach around Houston. Sit and wait. And I'll tell you, Phil, if he strikes here, I'm going to have to sit and wait to see who gets up for each team to throw this, this tenth frame roll off. They'll be able to select the player. Like I said, we'll just... We'll wait and see. Boy, this kid has grown up a lot here over the last 10 minutes. <laughs> Ten pins standing. Oh, what a tough break and a 
great shot for Robert Smith. The messenger came across. It came across, and watch how close it is. Head pin to the sideboard. It's racing back. It goes right in front of the 10 pin, doesn't touch it. Pete Couture, David Houston, they're your champions. The Pro Bowler Tour on ESPN has been brought to you by the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, America's premier bowling destination. For information, call 800-304-BOWL. By Brunswick. Get the power of Proactive only from Brunswick. Congratulations to Dave Houston and Pete Couture, winners of the National Bowling Stadium National Senior Double. Be sure to join us Sunday, January 23rd in Las Vegas. Catch all the action on ESPN at 12.30 Eastern Time. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the Go Network. Go.com.